Thank you so much. Thanks for everyone coming over. Uh, thanks so much for Design Forum for putting this together and having me. Uh, thanks so much for Ilona Jaskelainen over down uh, the Dutch Embassy, of course. There you guys are. <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me here. And uh, Carolina Kusi, thank you for supporting me. Uh, that's very nice of you. Uh, so I'm Kerry. I'm, I am Finnish. I live in Amsterdam. And I'm here to talk about the digital-only fashion house and the digital-only fashion industry, which to me is extremely exciting. Uh, we say that we're always digital and never physical. A lot of people come up to us and say like, oh, this digital asset, but it can all also be physical, right? And I say, yes, but no, we are not interested in the physical, traditional fashion industry. And simply for the reason, there's more than enough physical fashion brands in the world. The traditional fashion industry produces around 100 billion items per year. That's more than enough for everybody. So the world does not need more physical fashion brands. We need digital fashion brands. And if anything, we need a, a digital fashion experience that replaces the physical fashion experience. And uh, you know, Sharon and Oscar were talking about it a, a little bit already. Uh, but for me, it's all, all about experiential. We all also say that we waste nothing but data and exploit nothing but our imagination. It's a wordplay on the wasteful, exploitative nature of the traditional fashion industry. So talking about here, fashion 2025, the year when physical fashion becomes obsolete. I'm not going to go too much into what that means just yet. Just going to talk about what we do and then revisit it at the end. Uh, so talk a little bit about myself. Thank you so much for the intro already. I will have to shorten that. Uh, I'll talk about the digital transformation of the physical fashion industry. Do we have any traditional fashion industry people here? Anybody who works in traditional fashion? One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. Uh, anybody who works in digital only fashion industry? Probably not. Okay. Anybody who knows about digital fashion industry? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the wardrobe of the metaverse as well, what we're building. So a little bit about myself. I am Finnish, born and raised in Hollola. Uh, I left Finland when I was 13 years old, and ever since then lived in Germany, Netherlands, uh, Australia, based in Amsterdam at the moment. It's where I call home. Uh, I do have a film, film and visual effects uh, background and a big career in adv advertising that I absolutely hated, and I wanted to get out of it, but I was always searching, how can I do something that has purpose and impact with a traditional film and visual effects background? Well, digital fashion presented itself as an opportunity in 2016. And uh, ever since then, the timing has been great, and we're growing all the time. Uh, my team is about 60 people right now. I have a fantastic leadership team uh, from all different corners, from traditional finance, uh, from, from visual effects, from, from corporates, uh, from startups, and of course, Amber, my creative director, who was the first ever person to graduate from a fashion academy with a digital-only portfolio. And she had to fight her way through with her teachers to say, I don't want to contribute to this physical fashion world. And it really came from what happened in Bangladesh in 2014, in the Magna Rasa, where more than 1,100 people died working for the fashion industry. Uh, so some of the milestones, 2018 we've been in business, we did a digital only fashion show that we showcased at the same time in Amsterdam, Paris and Maastricht in the same day. So that's again the value of digital fashion. You don't have to be shipping samples all over the world to different showrooms, to different fashion weeks. You can just do it from your home, behind your computer and showcase it everywhere. In 2019, we sold the world's first digital-only dress on the blockchain. This was sold for 54 ETH, which was $9,500 back then, uh, more like $100,000 right now, because ETH price is about 2,000 euros uh, for one ETH. Uh, in 2020, pandemic hits. Fa fashion industry can't get no samples from China, can't get no samples from Turkey. 
Italy or Portugal, a complete lockdown, so they all need to digitize, and they need to still sell their collections. So how to do it? They needed to create 3D renderings. This is what we did together with Virtual Lapla, uh, uh, a great fashion designer who uh, passed away last year, unfortunately, but that was a great collaboration that we got to work with. Again, very traditional uh, fashion, uh, interesting, fun, but we believe that the future of fashion is digital. Last year, we did the, the world's first uh, digital-only cover for Vogue. I'll show you in a little bit how that works. And this year, we got our Series A funding round, which is 14 million, which, again, it's a very tiny speck of money of what we're actually building. Because we're not building a company, we're building the digital-only fashion industry. It's an ecosystem. It's not anymore this Web2 thinking, it's, it's a Web3 ecosystem. Now, who understands the word Web3 here? Any Web3 heads? Yeah, one, two, few, few half hands. Okay, I'm going to talk about the Web3 world and how blockchain is going to change and how digital fashion is related to that. I'm sorry, I'm going very quick, but the timer is going down very quick as well. I, only, I have a lot of slides and a lot of stuff to say. <laughs> So let me talk about the current value chain, uh, digital value chain for brands. So this is for the four people who are working in the traditional fashion industry. I'll go through it very quickly. Digital product creation. So if you know how traditional fashion works, it's about samples. Before you actually start making a collection, you create samples. So those samples can be fully digital. This is where some of the bigger fashion brands are these days, Tommy Hilfiger, Adidas, Nike, Puma, Under Armour, are doing fantastic stuff. Luxury is also moving this direction, but they're struggling because it's very difficult to create high quality 3D assets for the luxury fashion industry. Now, if you have this under your belt, the next step is you can actually sell those items without ever producing any physical fashion, only using digital renders. This is something that we did together with Under Armour back in 2019. 6,000 renderings of items, saving essentially more than 6,000 physical items that needed to be produced. Then you can sell those, you can create some animations. This is where really my film and visual effects background comes in. Using the tools from film and visual effects and gaming, you can start creating renderings to show, hey, there's emotion, there's narrative to it. This is the way it moves, this is the way it looks like to get your buyers excited to buy the stuff. Something that we did together with Puma, because once you have that digital product creation, you can do B2B sales, and you can be also selling to your consumer. You know? And I'll talk about the next slide, which it's a very important part of the milestone within the fabricants. When we started, is anybody working with H&M here by any chance? No H&Mers? Okay, then I can bash them. H&M, we, we saw them as one of the biggest evildoers in the fast fashion industry. And we said, we don't want to contribute to them. We don't want to help them out. But H&M came to us and said, we're going to do a digital-only collection. And then our, our, let's say, moral dilemma within the fabricant was, do we want to work with H&M? Do we want to contribute to the change that they're creating? Or do we want to create a stance and say, no, we don't want to work with you guys. But we also know people who work in fashion are typically great intention, very smart, and very passionate about the industry itself. So we wanted to say yes to the people who want to create the change, but still taking a stance that H&M, they have created a fast fashion monster, but they're also trying to change it. So it's a quick video that I'll go through. digital only collection for H&M that all of the H&M consumers could go and wear digitally. I'm not going to go into the detail how that exactly works. However, still promoting physical fashion. I'm not proud of it. So we said goodbye to that world. No more traditional physical fashion. Now we're focused only on physical fashion. And here comes the golden nuggets, the big opportunity for traditional fashion. It's the gaming world. And now, where we're going to talk about the big opportunity for Finland is to cross-pollinate between gaming and traditional fashion. You have fantastic gaming companies in this country. Now, it's very hard to 
put those two together, but when you do, you have something fantastic. The fabricant essentially is a cross-pollination of fashion, visual effects, and blockchain. And it, we're positioning ourselves dead in the middle of that. All right, so quickly, digital product creation, B2B sales, marketing, immersive. Because you can use the assets that you create in the beginning, you can use throughout that value chain on every single step without ever creating a single piece of physical clothing. You can create experiences, and you can even do a digital first sales funnel. That's for traditional fashion. But let's go and look at the true exciting part, which is the, the current use cases for digital fashion. Uh, some people see it as gimmicky, so don't take this, okay, this is going to be the future. This is going to be a glimpse in the future. This is, I'm giving you a glimpse of what is to come and what is to evolve and what will be the future of digital fashion, because digital fashion is more scalable and it's more sustainable and it will be more profitable as well once we introduce those business models into it. AR filters. So here on the, on the right side, you see Mintu Vesala, Super Mintu, who's a Balenciaga supermodel. She's wearing digital-only fashion that we created, not for the Met Gala, we did it for the Meta Gala, because we wanted to say, F you traditional world, F yes, the new metaverse world. You know, we're creating the replacements. We're creating the new experiences. So we're, we're talking about not changing the Oscars, not changing the fashion weeks. We're actually, we're adding on top of it to add value, not to replace anything. NFT games, and what I mean by NFT games, open ecosystems. It's very hard to be collaborating with a traditional gaming company because they're not open ecosystems. Blockchain, crypto world, Web3, to me, this is the future. This is where everything is happening. Again, we're not building companies. We're building ecosystems where everybody who participates profits. And maybe you've heard of Bored Apes and all of these NFT projects where people are making a lot of money. This is simply, if you participate in the right economy with a healthy community, you can be making money out of it. And something that's very, very important especially for luxury fashion. Before it can truly move into that people are going to care about digital fashion, you need to be creating high quality experiences. You need to create tangibility in the digital only clothing. So people actually will care, so that people will understand. So this is totally rendered in Unreal Engine, which is a gaming engine, which 50% of the games in the world use, and using the fabric and clothing. So this is the direction that we start going. Our aim is to create the highest quality digital-only fashion experiences on the blockchain so people can start experiencing it, wearing it, and making money from it. So let's look at some of the opportunities. We're kind of working on these, some not. Uh, wearing yourself digitally on social media. This trend actually started in 2018. It came from Carl Link's advice campaign, which is me sending a picture to a provider like DressX, and they put digital clothing onto you, so you can put it on social media. Maybe a lot of you think, like, okay, why would I want that? Well, a lot of people do. I don't. I don't do it, but I provide the clothing for it. It is, it is an experience that once it's automated, because right now it takes about one to two days to actually dress an image digitally, so it's not scalable. We need to create the technology that allows for instant try-on, the so-called virtual try-on, that I'm standing here and I want to buy some clothing and I can try it on digitally immediately. Again, I mentioned NFT games. There's a lot of, lot, a lot of stuff coming from the, from the Web3 world and gaming is the biggest opportunity. Where we are preparing an infinite closet of digital-only clothing ready to be worn in the metaverse once the games are ready for it. So the wardrobe is already there. In 2022-23, we're going to start seeing these NFT games starting to come out. So when I buy that one digital-only fashion asset, I will own it. That's the true value of 
blockchain. I can wear it then in AR. I can wear it in NFT games like Star Atlas, Sandbox, Decentraland, Cornerstone Land, and many others. And then I can also share it on social media. And now the additional value of digital-only fashion, you don't, you're not anymore a passive observer of the fashion industry. You're going to become an act, active participant. And that's the big difference. It's like watching a movie, which is like you're passively consuming it, versus playing a game, you're actively participating in it. And this is what fashion is going to be. I always love the analogy of the smartphone. The smartphone made everybody a photographer and a videographer, a content maker, which allowed for YouTube, which allowed for Instagram, which allowed for many other platforms to, to appear from. And through that, we realized that it's not any more pretty cameras or technology that is king. No, content is king. Storytelling is king. Identity is king. And that's what we're focusing with digital-only fashion. We will enable everybody to became, become a digital-only fashion designer, a co-creator, a model, a creative director, for those who choose to be that. You can also just choose to buy digital clothing and start your own metaverse store and sell digital-only clothing. Something else we did uh, a few years back, Australian Fashion Week, designed, designed an item and then you could go into this booth and you would kind of stand there in a weird A pose and then you would get this uh, clothing photoshopped onto you on the spot. So again, when I talk about scalability, this is what's needed. This was a, this was a real time experience. It cost around 100,000 euros to put together. So very expensive. Uh, stores are not going to do that very quickly, but it's what's needed. It's the so-called virtual try-on for the traditional fashion industry. And of course, we want people to wear digital only clothing. We want people to experience digital only clothing. So that's why it's super important that these experiences start coming. And again, what I mentioned earlier, the digital only fashion cover for Vogue magazine. First Vogue magazine ever to just come out with a QR code on the, on the magazine cover itself that you would then have to scan with your phone, which will take you onto a blockchain marketplace where you could actually purchase the cover on the blockchain. So now that you purchase the cover on the blockchain, you're the owner of a digital-only fashion magazine cover. And there's only a few, there's only a handful of the covers in the world. And the, let's say the total amount that it accumulated was about 100 ETH, around 200,000 euros at the moment. But that secondary market value is what's important here. It's the secondary market that gives it value. So you're not buying a physical magazine anymore. That declines in value. You're buying a digital-only fashion magazine right now. And because it's the world's first, it's actually going to go increase in value. Maybe not immediately, but in the years to come, because it was the first ever. And then you, of course, have the AR filter that you get to wear this fancy headdress if you own the cover as well. So rewind back. What is the business model for the physical traditional industry? Well, they create, like, let's, this is a hypothetical situation. They create one, one million items. If they're lucky, you know, if, if they're a hotshot brand, maybe they'll sell that collection out, but most brands don't. You know? So let's just say less than one million are sold, less than one million items are worn, and then afterwards, you know, one million items will sooner or later be thrown away, recycled, burnt, maybe resold, but not that many. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's, it's very little. Uh, so that kind of wastefulness of the fashion industry is yeah, something that will continue if we keep producing more clothing, because that's what's happening. And my logic is we need to reduce the amount of clothing that gets sold. But the, di digi Sorry. the digital business model is you produce one item that you can replicate that infinite amount of times. You can have an infinite amount of users. I'm not saying that's a good marketing tactic, but it's possible. And then the secondary market for the user, that becomes more important. The fact that it actually goes up in value if you have a great digital fashion asset, like the one that we sold in 2019. It was sold for 54 ETH, People are bidding on it now. 
100 ETH, 200 ETH, 500 ETH. And the, the guy who owns it, he's like, I'm not going to sell it for less than 4 million, 2,000 ETH. Okay, that's a unique case. It's not going to be for everything. I will be out of time. I'm sorry, IT people. But you just give me one more minute. <laughs> Uh, so let, let, let me come back to this. It, I'm not saying that physical fashion is going to become obsolete. We're not going to be all sitting here naked, don't worry. But I'm saying that we can have less amount of clothes, but the emotional experience can be a digital experience because it's all about identity. We don't buy clothes just to keep yourself warm, just to cover your body. We buy it for our identities. And now if we create that fantastic experience and business model, especially the day that digital will become more profitable than physical, all brands are going to move into that space. And we already see it with Gucci and Balenciaga. So again, business model, that Web2 business model is going to die out. Every single company in this world will have a Web3 replacement. And what I mean by Web3, it's an ecosystem play, and it's actually making your consumer or your user a stakeholder in your economy, powered by the token itself. So quickly, what's coming from us? We're going to build digital-only fashion. We got 14 million to burn, and our investors saw, you guys need to use it, and you need to be aggressive, and you need to build this digital-only fashion industry. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're just going to create a lot of digital fashion and experiences and putting it everywhere. So this is already something, as you can see, you know, I would never wear those earrings in my real life. But in, in AR, with my digital virtual identity, it becomes a lot easier. And I haven't asked for you, because this is the country of the gaming world, and I'm sure every single one of you knows at least one person in the gaming industry here. Please, could you connect me with the gaming industry veterans? I need to get in touch with this industry in Finland. I need to grow with that technology. We're extremely strong on the fashion side in the Netherlands. We need to get better on the tech side from the gaming side. There's my contact details. So yeah, here's my question. Are you ready to upload fashion to the next level of the existence? Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Two minutes over. <laughs> Thank you, that was absolutely fascinating. I think we have lots and lots of questions, but we're running a bit uh, behind schedule. So we only have time for one question, uh, but I do want to let our audience know that there will be time for questions at the end when we have all of our speakers up on stage. So we're gonna take one question from our audience, the microphone. Let's see who she... <laughs> hey. Uh, thanks for, for the presentation. Uh, it was really inspiring. Uh, I think very short question um, is that uh, where can we, we find more information or how can we learn? I'm uh, a student in Alta doing my thesis about how traditional uh, functional clothing designers can uh, use the 3D programs um, uh, and uh, to create better clothing. But then I've dived in the kind of your world, uh, but it's so complicated, I feel. And uh, through all the, all the uh, podcasts and everything, I feel that there is so kind of scattered information. Do you have some place? Or is it your place? Let, let, <laughs> let's just say the best place to find information, and not the easiest place, I, I agree, is on our Discord, is, is to go on Discord. Discord is very gaming industry focused, very gaming community focused, but that's where we have a lot of people talking on how, how, how do we do the digital fashion items that we do, how do we put them on the blockchain. Uh, our YouTube channel as well, full of videos, where we're constantly giving more and more and more because we know that we need to educate uh, the fashion industry as, as well as many people about digital only fashion. So we're constantly creating content. So I would say Discord and YouTube are the best places to search for, search for the fabricant uh, and hopefully you can find your way through. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Kerry, for the wonderful presentation. Thank you so and, much. Uh,